Well, ladies and gentlemen, now what we're simply going to do is if you look at this, um, now the problem with this problem compared to the last problem is the last problem there was no addition or subtraction, right? Everything was separated by multiplication, correct? Yes. Now we have some expressions that are separated by addition and subtraction. So the first thing I want to do, if you guys remember last class period, we simplify these. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is simplify these by factoring. So basically what I would recommend you do is factor every numerator. See if you can factor every numerator and denominator separately. Okay. So let's look up here. Can I factor out x minus 3? Is there anything that x minus, can I rewrite x minus 3 as a product of any two numbers? Is there anything they share that I can factor out? No. What about 2x minus 8? And again, guys, when I think about factoring, I think about what I'm trying to factor is like the area of a box. All right? Can I rewrite this as a length times a width, 2x minus 8? Mm -hmm. Yeah, should I write like 7 outside of there? No. no, I should pick a number that evenly divides into 2x and negative 8. And does anybody have a number you want me to try? 2. 2. So if I chose 2, then 2 times what gives you 2x? X. 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 And 2 times what gives you negative 8? 4. four. Negative 4. So everybody would agree with me then 2 times x minus 4 is the same thing as 2x minus 8. Except this is what we call our factored form. So I'm just going to rewrite the problem. x minus 3 over 2 times x minus 4. Now let's do another box here. Let's do 6x squared minus 96. Okay. Is there anything they, these all share? 6, 3, 2. Three. No, they share three. three. I know that. They share, they three. share three. Do they share, what about, a, what is the largest number they could both share? Eight. Largest number they should both share would be six. Seven. Does six go into 96? Six. 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 No, it does not. Yes, it does. <laughs> okay. So, okay, guys. Six times what gives you six x squared? X squared. X squared. Six times what gives you a negative 96? 32. Close. Yep, Okay. So I can rewrite this as 6 times x squared minus 16. Okay, now, and over x squared minus 9. Now I'm going to get to these two in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, do you, when we talked about factoring, when we were doing factoring, when we were solving um, by factoring techniques, there was one thing we came up when we had two terms and they were both square numbers. It was called the difference of something. Does anybody remember? The difference of two squares. And basically what the difference of two squares, the factoring technique was, if you had a squared number subtracted by another squared number, you could factor that as a minus b times a plus b. So let's go and look at this. So whenever I'm trying to factor and I see two terms, I always think of factoring by two difference of two squares. Is x squared a squared number? Yeah. Is 16 a squared number? Yeah. Yes. Is x squared a squared number? Is 9 a squared number? Yes. yes. So I can do both of these. I can actually factor both of these further. I could do x minus 4 times x plus 4. I could do x squared minus 9 as x plus 3 times x minus 3. Yes? Yes? I'm sorry, say that again? I didn't hear you like fully. Oh, you mean why don't I just factor out a 3? Right. Right, you mean why am I not multiplying these out? OK. The basically, because I mentioned what I want you to do when you have expressions like this. This is not like the last problem. That's why I'm doing an example like this. When you have a problem, listen, when you have a problem, where you have separation of addition and subtraction. We're, remember, we're trying to simplify this, right? We're trying to make this look simpler, right? So what we want to do, rather than multiplying, because yes, you could multiply, right? But that's not going to help us simplify it. That's just going to multiply it. In the previous example, multiplying helped us simplify it, because of what it did is it combined terms. 
Here, if you multiply, you're not going to have terms you can combine. So you're making it more complicated. Okay? So you don't want to multiply these. So when you have terms that are separated by addition or subtraction, the, re the reason why I'm doing an example like this is I want you guys to factor. Okay? Always try to factor. But remember, if you had something like this, 3x squared divided by 16, you know, x cubed, you know, y to the fifth, you can't factor anything here, right? There's no factoring. It's already simplified, right? Yes, right? So yeah. there's nothing to factor. Here, in this example, you can factor these. So that's what I want you to do is factor them. Now, does that kind of answer your question a little bit? OK. Here, we know that x squared minus 16 can be factored into x minus 4, x plus 4. So I'm going to rewrite that. <coughs> x minus 4 times x plus 4. <coughs> And then over here, I can rewrite this as x plus 3 times x minus 3. So now, ladies and gentlemen, when you look at this, here's this big problem. I have everything multiplied together. Now, everything, all of my expressions, are separated by multiplication. And since you have everything is being multiplied by one another, now I can divide out common terms that are in the numerator as well as in the denominator. So ladies and gentlemen, we look at this and we say, do I have any common terms that are both in the numerator and the denominator that can divide to 1? Anybody see any? Just any common expressions that are the same in the numerator and the denominator that I can divide to 1? X minus 3. So those divide to 1. Is there anything else? X minus 4. Those divide to 1. So now, what am I left with? 6x plus 4 divided by 2x plus 3. Can I divide 2 into 6? Yeah. And that gives me? 3. Which is in the numerator or in the denominator? Denominator. Numerator. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's why I put it right there. So I'm saying 2 divides into 6 three times, right? So your final answer is 3 times x plus 4 divided by x plus 3. There you go. Sorry? I divided the 2 into the 6 to give you 3. We kind of make a little bit of sense, más o menos. I'm just going to erase the problem. Is that OK? Wait, how do you Can I erase this? Yeah. No, I'm just going to erase this. Yes? When you did 6 divided by 2, how did you determine whether 3 goes on the number and 2 goes on the number? Huh? Yeah. Say that again. When you divided 6 by 2, how did you determine whether or not the 3 went on the number? Right. That's why I always write like the 3 over 1. If you divide the top by 2, you get what? Three. If you divide the bottom by two, you get one, right? All right, so you guys need another one? Uno mas. Yes. All right, I guess we'll have to do. Calculus. You guys want to do a calculus one? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Nick said he wanted to do a calculus one, so we'll do a calculus now. Here. Sure. 